And I've spent 50 years or more working in fusion, and so I'm very keen to see it working. I'm Alan Sykes, and I got interested in spherical tokamaks uh, a long time ago. I started at Cullum in 1965 in the theory division and did computer modelling and it was about 10 years after that I started looking into the, the beta limit, this efficiency limit on tokamaks because at the time it was only one or two percent and that seemed to be a major problem in making tokamaks uh, viable and I found that by reducing this aspect ratio we got much better results so I, I started saying why don't we investigate this the colour management decided this was very interesting and we were going to see what Martin Peng, how he got on with his spherical torus experiments in the States. But the States had a, had a design review or a review and decided not to build it. And so that's when people at Cullum said, OK, we'll build one and we'll do it out of spare parts. So then we built the start experiment at Cullum and that gave incredibly good results. And so they had a tank, which is a you know, cylindrical section tank, and we put it all together for a cost of £100,000 which was the cost of professionally winding the core, some of the coils and putting them in steel cases. The natural um, uh, next step was MUST, the same concept but two times bigger. And I was in charge of a uh, uh, physics program of MUST for uh, several years. Exciting experiments, so we achieved uh, full performance, nearly full performance of MUST in the first couple of years. So it, that was very impressive. Uh, it also confirmed that spherical tokamaks are easy to operate, they are much more stable, confinement is good, everything is fine. <laughs> it was on Mars from day one to the, to the last day. So that was, it, it was a big uh, project, very interesting. Now at Tokamak Energy we're building the SD40. SD40 is going to be the world's first high field spherical tokamak. Previous experiments such as MAST and NSTX have indicated that high field might allow you to get a much better performance in a spherical tokamak compared to a conventional tokamak. So SD40 will be the first kind of test of this scaling. It's a direct continuation of our start MAST line. It's a spherical tokamak. It is in size, it is between start and MAST. Somehow that helps us to believe that we can predict performance of this machine quite well because uh, start worked well, MAST worked well, so a uh, device in between should work well. There are two main uh, advances. The first advance is that, uh, okay, we are building uh, the Stokamak with much higher toroidal field, so which will much better performance because magnetic fusion is all about toroidal magnetic field and magnetic fields. But the second interesting thing that this is a new machine, so all new technologies, all new approaches that exist, we are going to use. So it will be the 21st century device. We are using much better technologies, equipment and diagnostics. So the first milestone we're hoping to achieve on SD40 is 15 million degrees. So that's the temperature of the sun. So that's still relatively cold in fusion terms, but it's where things start to get interesting. And then from then on, we're looking to push up to 100 million degrees where fusion can actually start to occur. SD40 is designed from the outset to be high field and study this, this essential ingredient, what is the confinement time at high field in a spherical tokamak. First of all, we want to get very hot plasmas to demonstrate we can do that, and then my own special interest is uh, getting the plasma moved into the, around the centre column, like the famous picture on start, but now at two or three tesla, and seeing how hot and what the energy confinement time of that plasma is. And once we know that, we're able to predict what a larger version of this device will actually be and predict exactly uh, what a spherical tokamak power plant will need to be.